find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. I'm hungry, spark, but I ain't starving yet. Chain for the pain, cocktail, dog, set. Never said I was a gangster or a thug, but I'm an animal. Pizza for the taste of the fly. Hey guys, it's Mike Sorg at Sorgatron here on the Twitter with the Indie Mayhem Show. i got a great interview lined up this week. But of course, please check everything out at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Subscribe to the Indie Mayhem Show on Stitcher, Spreaker, iTunes, iHeartRadio, as well as video versions on the Facebook and the YouTube for Wrestling Mayhem Show. And of course, support the show. Support all the shows over at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. And drop us a line if you have any questions uh, for any announced upcoming uh, interviews or anything like that. Um, over a 412-206-WMS0 or good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. We are uh, uh, getting it. We, 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 you know, are, are, we've been putting the lines out there. We had some representation at Rise a few weeks ago or I guess uh, last month, uh, actually. And, uh, and, and we have another fantastic talent here from the West Coast. So I'm going to be asking a lot of California wrestling questions on this one. With me right now, another great, great talent, the Fallen Flower, Kikyo, joins us. How you doing today? Hello. Thank you. At least you got it right this time. <laughs> That's Maybe right. I, get, I give everybody one chance. <laughs> uh, thank you for joining me. Well, first, we'd like to get into um, um, you know, a little get-to-know-you on uh, the show. So, uh, first, how did you get into pro wrestling? What's kind of your earliest memory of pro wrestling? Um, I remember being a toddler and pretending that I was Jimmy Superfly Sucka jumping off of the couch onto the couch cushions. Um, but I, I grew up watching wrestling since before I was born. My grandparents watched it. My parents watched it. It was just one of those natural progression things. So I was the weird kid in school that got picked on because I was a girl and I liked pro wrestling. <laughs> I wanted to be the pro wrestler and everybody else wanted to be a princess or a doctor or, you know, a lawyer or some other crap. And I'm like, I'm going to be a pro wrestler. <laughs> I'm gonna punch you in the face because you're <laughs> weird. That's awesome. So it was pretty. It was pretty foregone co- foregone conclusion right off the bat that you were going to get into pro wrestling. Everybody thought I was lying when I started training. <laughs> they really did, and like I, I would have random people from high school hit me up out of nowhere and, oh, what are you doing now, man? I'm like, well, I'm pro wrestling. What? That's so cool. Like, I didn't know you were actually going to do that. And I'm like, I didn't know you were actually a jerk. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> That's awesome. So, so how did you uh, uh, make that connection? Like, was it easier to find a school uh, uh, coming out of that? Were you, you know, were you able to find one? You know, were always looking for one, like, from day one? Um, I've kind of been looking for a home since day one. I, I've jumped around in my training a lot. Um, I started in Fresno. I uh, was there for a little while, uh, trained in Modesto for a few years, and then moved up to Sacramento. There was some issues, so my, my training's definitely been kind of like, I've really had to take what I've learned from literally everyone that I meet and put it into into myself and figure out what to do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and thankfully, I've had certain people along the way to actually like help me put those little pieces of information that I've obtained to put them in a decent order. That's awesome. What is the so you know we have a lot of we talk with a lot of people. Of course, uh, we're up in the Pittsburgh area, so we have a lot of uh, Northeast or or our Texas friends um, um, from down that way. What is the kind of indie wrestling scene looking like in California? It's blown up a lot in the last couple of years or so. Um, people don't really pay attention to the West Coast a lot, and if they do pay attention to the West Coast, it's some usually along the lines of either hardcore and deathmatch stuff or backyard and the women of not only the women of NorCal, but just in general, NorCal as a whole has really stepped up their game. And, uh, instead of everyone looking towards SoCal for gorilla, they're starting to look up toward North for hood slam and gold rush pro wrestling. Um, but I mean, SoCal is always going to get that rub before NorCal does, but it's, it's starting to change. And it looks like I, I have some notes. Of course, our boy Alex Carzo. I did. The, I think I believe there's some art for you. Is that correct? He does. He does almost everything for me. <laughs> I love that man so much. He, he's helped me out since uh, since before I was doing Kikio. So he, he's a pretty cool dude. 
<laughs> That's awesome. But he, he gave me some notes here uh, to, to let me know what to expect, what to ask you about here uh, for this. And and he says you're currently Lady Luck champion over at Gold Rush Wrestling in Sacramento, which I have relatives outside of Sacramento, so I'm going to have to visit someday. It's actually in Sacramento. We're in the Bay Area from Pacifica, California, actually. About an hour and a half uh away so definitely not sacramento <laughs> okay uh, uh tell me tell me about you know you know you said that there's a lot of opportunities for women kind of popping up uh, uh for women's wrestling out there definitely especially now uh, as you can see rise mm-hmm. uh, rise 2 is going to be in southgate california where normally aws runs uh aws will be running a show the day afterwards as well and if you, if you are a female pro wrestler, whether you're just a women's wrestler, an intergender wrestler, uh, a hardcore wrestler, it doesn't matter. Like if you are a female in this business and you are in the pro wrestling anywhere, you need to go down to Rise and try and get your ass to Southgate because Soraya Knight alone, just the name alone of Soraya Knight should be worth you paying $75 and a plane ticket to go and learn from her. Um, just in four hours of doing the, the first rise seminar was I've learned so much, so much. Oh my goodness. And then I was, a lot of people were pretty upset that uh, more than half of the girls left from the first one when we had shimmer 88 through 90 that we could have been a part of. And I, myself, along with my tag partner of the boomer death squad, Ronnie Nicole, we got a dark match on shimmer. We, we got that extra look. And so if, if you stick around for the entire weekend, depending on what's going on, like they, they're very, they're very like open about, Hey, like these shows are happening this weekend. Maybe you should stay, you know, Hey, this, this might be really helpful if you guys do this hint, hint, nudge, <laughs> nudge. So it's, if, if you do this seminar, it, it's a great opportunity for not only, you know, somebody from California to see you, but Dave Prezak's going to be there. Soraya Knight, Colt Cabana is also another trainer that's that's going to be there. And there's so many eyes that are looking at this right now, especially after the first one. So, yeah, the first one's like really important to be a part of. But the second one is the one where all the buzz is going to be about because it's going to be like, well, are they going to be able to repeat themselves? Right. So you need to go. You need to go. That's good. Do it. it, it that's right. Our boy uh, Traegar, uh, um, you know, that, that was out there representing at Rise. And uh, he said it was a pretty and 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 the, the the Shimmer Weekend and everything out there in Chicago, and said it was a pretty great weekend of wrestling. So yeah, they, we had forty girls from literally all over the United States and other countries. Like we had girls from Canada. We had a girl. I wrestled a girl from Italy. Like they knew what could be give. Like they knew what what the opportunities given were. Mm-hmm. You know, to five Shimmer shows along with. Dave Prezak to see you wrestle and you know you see all these girls getting brought up and now for for NXT because they're bringing up all of their people to the main roster like hello those spots are open people mm-hmm. wake up wake up and we talked a little bit obviously there's a lot of stuff going out there in, in, in California um, but on top of Chicago that we were just talking about uh, I see you're also traveling to Orlando a bit too um, yeah, so what happened after Rise was my brother, who I hadn't seen since I was 12 years old, um, flew me out so that way I can see family and whatnot. And of course, what am I going to do? Oh, I'm in Florida for three weeks. Let me uh, let me go get some bookings real quick. <laughs> <laughs> so I wrestled for I Believe in Rocky and Riot Pro Wrestling, which was a lot of fun. Um, I got to wrestle Rake and Fire a couple of times, and that girl's only been in the business for like a year, and she she's pretty good. I was very happy to work with her, and I got to uh, work with... Uh, with Lane Rosario, who I had met at Rise, and that was pretty fun. Um, and I also got to work for their intergender tag team championships, uh, which I don't <laughs> I don't understand how this has followed me ever since SoCal, and I'd like to thank Supreme and Sage Sin for this. Um, excuse my French, but <laughs> I was called a blueberry shithead <laughs> by Supreme. And not only has blue or blueberry always, like blue in general, obviously, because, you know, uh, but uh, being called a blueberry followed me up to Oregon, and it followed me all the way to Orlando, and I don't know how the hell it happened. <laughs> That's great. Uh, like no, so I'm like oh, I'm a blueberry. I'm like, oh dang it, damn you, Sage Sin. I had to message her, be like, this is all your fault. This is completely your fault. 
Uh, and then I actually just recently got back from Georgia this past weekend where I wrestled Jessica Lee. Mm. How, and now I'm currently in Vegas. <laughs> how, how importantly, you know, you know, obviously you're, you work in Vegas, California, uh, you got the West Coast, but it, it does feel like, you know, uh, being in Pittsburgh, I, I know we see people come in um, by car or bus sometimes from as far away as Texas, Nashville, uh, uh, Georgia, uh, the Carolinas, um, you know, insane hours, but driving distance. But it seems like like your region is, is even more kind of cut off. From the from the rest of the country uh, um, uh, out that way, how important is that to get you know out to the east, the general east coast uh, to to get you know into some of these shows and 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 explore you know get in the ring with some different talent. It's yeah, honestly it's frustrating. Um, uh, California, if you were to take the state of California and put it over on the east coast, hmm. it goes from like New York all the way down to Raleigh, North Carolina. Like it goes from Canada to North Carolina. That's how big our state is. Mm-hmm. So when an East Coaster's like, "Oh, you've only wrestled in a few states," yeah, dude, because it takes almost sixteen. Like it takes more than sixteen hours to get from the top of California to the bottom of California. Right. You drive sixteen hours on the East Coast, you six six different states. That's why we don't get out as much, and and unfortunately, it's you know it's expensive to fly nowadays, especially after you know nine eleven, like. Plane flights are not are not cheap to buy, and, and and most people don't want to foot out that bill because they're like, oh, I don't know if this person's going to draw, but they're not giving us that chance to do it, which I completely understand. But at the same time, you know, if you've got people asking for us, we're right here. It's not hard. <laughs> you know, we do negotiate. <laughs> there you go. Uh, I'm, not, I, I'm not like going to pull it or anything. <laughs> I I do have a couple of questions from Trey. He's joining us live on the Facebook. Um, a live stream uh, over at the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook page. Uh, but yeah, a few questions. First of all, are we going to get a Buru Death Squad reunion uh, with you and Ronnie anytime soon? Um, you know what? If, whoever wants to see the Buru Death Squad, they have to talk to their promoters. I tell this to everybody all the time. If you want to see anybody at all, anywhere, you need to go up to that person and be like, hey, who do I talk to? I really want to see this person. If it Go ahead and start chanting our names during shows. They'll get it. They will get it right quick. Especially, you know, the people get pissed off. But, hey, we, we get to come in and show you what we can do because you're obviously wanting us. You're chanting our names during someone else's match, and we're not even there. So um, I would love to have Ronnie, you know, either back in California because she was just at BTW. I'd love to go out, you know, to the Carolinas where she's at. Like, book it. <laughs> we were death squad. We hungry. Awesome. Yeah, he has another. This is, this is less of a question than I think a comment. And he says, "Though I love Buru Nation, you got to watch out because of Ray Lynn and Cali. Now the Platinum World Tour is going to take over the state." Watch out because Ray Lynn. Oh, yeah, whatever, whatever, whatever. Ray Lynn can try and take over whatever she wants. Just to let you know, I've never been pinned or submitted in Gold Rush Pro Wrestling history ever. The title is now going on a um, hundred and seventy-two days. Give me one second. Let me. Let me check that real quick. Oh, yeah, 172 days. So go ahead. I've got an open challenge on Saturday in Pacifica, California. Go ahead and try it. <laughs> all right. Two more uh, real quick ones we like to end uh, uh, the show with. First of all, so what are you watching these days? What what wrestling are you uh, catching that's kind of uh, uh, you're getting your attention, you're keeping an eye on, maybe uh, getting some inspiration from these days? Um, honestly, because with the traveling, uh, whoa, now I can hear myself. That's weird. <laughs> with the traveling and not having like my own TV, I, I kind of watch what I can get. Um, I try my best to keep up with the main product, but I mean, it started to become noise again to me. Like I'm not too interested in what exactly is going on. I'm like, yeah, oh, my friend's doing this. Okay, cool. I'll watch that match real quick or. I'll watch things here and there, but for the most part, I'll stick to like, I usually stick to NXT if I'm home. Um, or if I, if I really do anything, I just, I YouTube whoever, <laughs> there's, there's really no, no specific people. I'm, I've been like researching my opponents and that's about it because I've never, you know, girls I've never wrestled before. Awesome. And, uh, uh, finally, what is the best and worst thing about indie wrestling in your time so far? 
Jesus, that that's a loaded freaking question. <laughs> <laughs> however you want to take it, however you want to take it, however you feel comfortable answering. The best and worst thing about, about indie wrestling, um, the best thing is you get to choose your family. Um, that's that's always been a, an issue, I think, for most people in pro wrestling is like the, either their families don't support it or even the ones that do, it's just, you know, you, you get to choose your family. You get to choose who you're around and who, you know, the, the brother and sisterhood that you get out of pro wrestling is just beyond what some, like somebody with your same blood can even go and do. Like I've, I've had so many more people help me out that I've met through wrestling than I have with my own family. Um, and, and the worst thing about it is just, especially as a female wrestler, you know, most people expect you to put up some kind of half naked photo or, you know, accept the fact that, Oh, you're so actually my roommate, Brittany wonder just posted this earlier. Uh, when, when people message us like, Oh, you're such a great wrestler. I love your matches. You're so sexy and beautiful. They're like, ah, no, don't do that. You're, you can compliment my matches, but don't sit there and tell me how sexy I am and how all that. Like it's, it's weird. It's creepy. Uh, the creepers are what ruin it for everybody. You know, this, those are the people that, and uh, we end up like making it to the point where we don't even talk to our fans anymore because we're afraid, not afraid, but you know, every time we talk to a fan, it's, Oh, you're so sexy. I want you to sit on my face. Wait, what? No. How, why would you actually go up to somebody in person and say something like that? No, you wouldn't. So why is it okay for you to be a keyboard warrior and be like, I'm going to go and say this to that person. That's rude. That's rude in any shame, like shape, form, fashion, whatever. Just, just don't, <laughs> please don't. We'll put you on blast, and it's fun, and we laugh at it constantly. Awesome. Uh, well, I, where can people find you? What promotions are you popping up in? Where can they find you online? Uh, this Friday, I will be at the SSW Training Center for Octane. It's their first live TV taping. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm wrestling. If not, I will be there in spirit, you know, or in person, I should say. Uh, go and buy my merch and help me pay my, for my baggage fees back home. Uh, <laughs> I just need like a couple of things bought, bro. Like that's all I need. Like 25 bucks to get my my bag checked for when I fly out Saturday because then I wrestle uh, at Cold Rush Pro Wrestling in Pacific California to defend my Lady Luck Championship. It's an open challenge. I don't know who I'm wrestling. I don't care who I'm wrestling. I'm still going to come out on top either way. So, um, And then I'll have East Bay Pro Wrestling in Pacheco, California the week after that, uh, where I take on the champion, Shotzi Blackheart, and we'll see if I come home with another piece of gold. Awesome. And, of course, online you're on Facebook and Twitter as well, right? Yep, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, everything. You can all find me at Fallen Kikyo, F A. L-L-E-N-K-I-K-Y-O. You can go to ProWrestlingTees.com slash Fallen Kikio and buy shirts there. Um, I've got three shirts up. I will have the Kikio chant with me uh, in person. I've still got about 15 shirts left. Make sure you get those before those are gone. Um, Because after this initial set, I won't be printing anymore. You can get them off Pro Wrestling Tees. There you go. Go check them out. Some great work by our buddy. Uh, I believe are all three of those by Alex? Now that I think about it, yeah. I, I think all three of them are from Alex. So there you go. It, it, it support her. Go to her pro wrestling tea store uh, while you're picking up your Wrestling Mayhem show shirts. And and you're supporting uh, a friend of the show, a uh, contributor to the show, Alex Cars as well. Uh, so definitely hit him, hit him yeah. up if you like. Uh, he does our shirts too, actually. Uh, so get the Alex Cars collection. And and look for recent episodes of Lucha Underground because uh, uh, we're in the front row with him with his uh, Temple uh, Lucha Temple shirt. So... Uh, so keep an eye out for that too. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been a great conversation as, as well as the internet has been allowing us to have it uh, tonight. Uh, thank you so much. Go check her out. Support uh, uh, everybody Everybody that's been on the show. Uh, find out the uh, uh, past interviews over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, IndieWrestling.us. Look for the Indie Mayhem Show. Uh, and of course, subscribe to it uh, everywhere. Support the show, support Patreon, support indie wrestling. See you guys next time. Show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.